Can humanity truly glimpse into the future, receiving cryptic messages from across time and space? For centuries, seers and prophets have stepped forward, offering dramatic visions of mankind's fate. Among these, none have captured the imagination or fear of the world like the 16th century French astrologer Nostradamus. Known for foreseeing some of history's most significant events, such as Hitler's rise to power, the death of Queen Elizabeth, and even the recent pandemic, Nostradamus's predictions continue to send shivers down the spine of those who dare to read his prophecies. And now, as the world seems to spiral into chaos, his visions once again cast a long shadow over our present and future. Join us as we delve into the top 10 prophecies that Nostradamus has foreseen. Prophecies that seem destined to unfold in the coming days, heralding the end times and the rise of a Middle Eastern Antichrist. In a prophecy penned in 1555, Nostradamus foretold that the year 2024 would be marked by a series of global catastrophes. His verses speak of increased conflicts, geopolitical turmoil, wars at sea, and even strife within royal families. Yet, amid these human struggles, the greatest threat to humanity in 2024 may come not from the hands of men, but from the wrath of nature itself. Nostradamus warned of a year where the earth, already plagued by a harsh climate, would face even greater peril. The dry earth will become drier, and suddenly a great flood will come, he wrote in Les Prophecies. These words seem to foretell a world where the impacts of climate change, extreme heat, devastating wildfires, prolonged droughts, and violent storms, grow more frequent and more severe, threatening the very survival of human civilization. We are living in an era where global warming and environmental destruction are no longer distant concerns, but present realities. The Bible, while not specifically mentioning climate change or global warming, speaks ominously of a world that will one day be consumed by fire. In 2 Peter 3.10, we are warned, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, the heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Could these words be a prophetic glimpse into our future, a time when the earth's worsening condition reaches a cataclysmic climax? The scriptures tell us that God will one day obliterate this current universe, replacing it with new heavens and a new earth. As we face the mounting crises of our time, we must ask ourselves, how much effort should we devote to preserving a world that is destined to be replaced by something far more glorious? In a world teetering on the brink of uncertainty and unrest, the prophecies of Nostradamus have drawn the attention of both believers and skeptics for centuries. Yet, among his many predictions, none are as foreboding as those that point to the end times and the emergence of a Middle Eastern Antichrist. Nostradamus's reputation for accuracy has unsettled generations, and his visions of future calamities continue to provoke both fear and fascination. Now, as we stand on the precipice of a new era, we revisit the mysterious verses of this renowned seer, exploring his warnings of apocalyptic events that could forever reshape our world. Can humanity truly glimpse into the future, receiving cryptic messages from across time and space? For centuries, seers and prophets have stepped forward, offering dramatic visions of mankind's fate. Among these, none have captured the imagination or fear of the world like the 16th century French astrologer Nostradamus. Known for foreseeing some of history's most significant events, such as Hitler's rise to power, the death of Queen Elizabeth, and even the recent pandemic, Nostradamus's predictions continue to send shivers down the spine of those who dare to read his prophecies. And now, as the world seems to spiral into chaos, his visions once again cast a long shadow over our present and future. First, we must grasp the gravity of Nostradamus's ominous predictions concerning the end times, foretellings that have both fascinated and unsettled scholars and enthusiasts for centuries. Nostradamus, a master of cryptic language and symbolic imagery, painted a grim portrait of the world's final days, with his prophecies often shrouded in mystery and open to multiple interpretations. Among his most infamous predictions 
is found in Century X, Quatrain 72, where he speaks of a great conflagration that will engulf the earth, ultimately leading to the collapse of civilization as we know it. This chilling verse, along with many others in his extensive body of work, has ignited intense debate and fervent speculation among those who seek to unravel the meaning of his words. The challenge in understanding Nostradamus lies in deciphering his complex symbolic language. His verses are rife with metaphors and allegories, requiring careful analysis to uncover their deeper meanings. For instance, his frequent references to the Great King of Terror and the Third Antichrist have long been interpreted as allusions to catastrophic global events and influential figures who will shape the fate of the world. By examining the historical context and seeking parallels between Nostradamus's cryptic writings and actual events, scholars have attempted to shed light on the true significance of his prophetic verses. But even now, much remains hidden, obscured by time and the veiled nature of his predictions. One of the most compelling and disturbing aspects of Nostradamus's prophecies is his vision of a Middle Eastern Antichrist. According to his writings, this figure of profound darkness will rise to power in the Middle East, wielding immense influence and leaving a trail of chaos and devastation in his wake. The Antichrist is portrayed as a malevolent leader who will usher in a period of intense suffering and turmoil, a harbinger of the ultimate apocalypse before he meets his own demise. The idea of a Middle Eastern Antichrist has fueled endless speculation and debate, with some seeing parallels in the rise of certain political figures in the region, while others argue that the prophecy should be understood in a more metaphorical sense. Nevertheless, the concept of a powerful and destructive figure emerging from the Middle East continues to haunt the imagination of those who study Nostradamus's prophecies. To delve deeper into Nostradamus's forewarnings about the end times and the Middle Eastern Antichrist, we must analyze specific verses and passages from his writings. One particularly unsettling verse, Century 4, Quatrain 50, speaks of a great earthquake occurring in the month of May. Some researchers believe this verse may foretell a future seismic event in the Middle East, one that could serve as a catalyst for a chain of cataclysmic occurrences, ultimately leading to the rise of the Antichrist. The potential for such a disaster, combined with the ongoing geopolitical tensions in the region, adds a layer of urgency to this prophecy, compelling us to consider its implications more seriously. In another troubling prophecy, Nostradamus seems to have foreseen World War I as the beginning of a new global conflict that would erupt 79 years after the end of the Second World War. This timeline, coupled with the current geopolitical climate, has led many experts and journalists to speculate that we are on the brink of another worldwide confrontation, possibly involving the rising power of China. The shifting dynamics on the global stage, marked by increasing tensions and rivalries, echo the warnings Nostradamus issued centuries ago. As the world teeters on the edge of unprecedented conflict, the signs of the end times seem to loom ever larger. China, a formidable global power with a long history of showcasing its might, has repeatedly flexed its naval strength in the volatile regions surrounding the South China Sea and Taiwan. Analysts warn that these displays of force could be the prelude to an escalating conflict in Asia, potentially drawing in NATO and sparking a violent military confrontation. Perhaps even an all-out war. Such a scenario eerily echoes the predictions of Nostradamus, who centuries ago wrote of naval battles and a red adversary becoming pale with fear sending tremors of dread across the oceans. Some interpreters see this red adversary as a reference to China, while others connect it to the ongoing tensions in Ukraine, the conflict between China and Taiwan, or the strife in Palestine. As wars and rumors of wars multiply, many turn to biblical prophecy, seeing in every earthquake political upheaval and attack on Israel the sure signs that the end times are drawing near. Yet, while these events may signal the approach of the last days, they are not definitive proof that the end has arrived. The Apostle Paul warned that in the last days, false teachings would proliferate, leading many astray. The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. These perilous times are marked not only by increasing wickedness, but by a deepening opposition to the truth, as the character of humanity grows ever more corrupt. 
Throughout the history of Christianity, believers have speculated that the prophesied end times were imminent. Some have even gone so far as to set specific dates, only to see those dates pass without incident. Those who predict the timing of the end often focus on wars, natural disasters, and moral decay, pointing to the intensifying storms, deadly viruses, famines, droughts, and escalating international tensions as evidence that the end is near. There is no doubt that a world war will feature in the events leading up to Christ's return. Jesus himself foretold, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. In Revelation 6-4, we see the image of a rider on a red horse, representing warfare, taking peace from the earth. The scriptures do not specify how many world wars will occur before the final conflict, but they do make clear that at least one more global war is yet to come. World Wars 1 and 2, while devastating, are not explicitly mentioned in scripture, nor is a potential third world war. Instead, the Bible focuses on the ultimate battle, the war that will bring an end to all wars. Although more wars may occur before this final confrontation, there is no doubt about the outcome. Righteousness will triumph as Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, defeats all who oppose Him. However, the end is not yet. Following Christ's millennial reign, there will be another rebellion, a final uprising led by Satan, who will be released after 1,000 years. This rebellion, which could mirror the scale of a world war, will be swiftly crushed by Christ, who will cast Satan into the lake of fire, alongside the beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. The emergence of the Antichrist, the third and final one, has long been anticipated, and Nostradamus, five centuries ago, foresaw this apocalyptic figure's arrival. Nostradamus spoke of three Antichrists, the first two Napoleon and Hitler drenched the world in blood, but it is the third who will bring the apocalypse. And now, it seems, his time has come. Many names have been speculated upon in connection with the Antichrist, figures who are famous, wealthy, eloquent, and capable of swaying the masses with their words. Some point to Donald Trump, others to Joe Biden, or even King Charles. But the true identity of this person remains uncertain. What we do know is that this embodiment of evil has likely already made his presence known, subtly flexing his power and influence. We are living in a time when the battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan is intensifying as never before. This escalation is a clear sign that we are nearing the return of Christ and the ultimate destruction of Satan's kingdom. As the Apostle John warned, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. These false leaders who have emerged from within are not truly of us, for if they were, they would have remained with us. But their departure reveals their true nature, as they stand in stark opposition to the truth. John continues, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? As we reflect on these words, we are reminded of the urgency of the times in which we live. The signs are all around us. Wars, rumors of wars, natural disasters, and the rise of false prophets. We must remain vigilant, rooted in the truth, and prepared for the day when Christ returns to establish His eternal kingdom, once and for all. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. This sobering declaration from Scripture reminds us that the spirit of Antichrist is not confined to a single figure, but is manifested throughout history in many forms. While many Antichrists have arisen, sowing deception and rebellion against God, there remains the looming specter of the Antichrist, one singular, final embodiment of evil who has yet to fully reveal himself on the world stage. As we stand on the precipice of the end times, the shadow of the Antichrist seems to fall ever closer across the world. Though the person has not yet been fully revealed, 
Scripture warns of a supremely powerful and malevolent ruler who will dominate humanity for a brief, terrifying period at the culmination of this age. This ruler, the Antichrist, will wield unimaginable influence, drawing the nations into his web of deceit and destruction. Yet, even as we await this ultimate figure of darkness, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work, infiltrating and corrupting from within, often beginning in association with the people of God before its true nature is exposed. This is the mark of the spirit of the Antichrist, a harbinger of the dark times to come. Nostradamus, the prophet whose grim predictions have echoed through the centuries, speaks to this unfolding reality. In one of his quatrains, he foretells a period of extreme and unsettling change. For forty years the rainbow will not be visible. For forty years it will appear every day. The land will dry out more and there will be big floods. This prophecy paints a picture of a world turned upside down, where the natural order is thrown into chaos. As tensions between global superpowers intensify, the threat of nuclear disaster looms ever larger. Simultaneously, the earth itself seems to revolt, with droughts and floods of biblical proportions wreaking havoc across the planet. In Africa, the devastation of climate change is already becoming alarmingly clear. Glaciers, once thought eternal, are vanishing, and more than 100 million people face the specter of drought, extreme heat, and floods. Within the next two decades, these environmental catastrophes could reduce the continent's GDP by a staggering 3%. These are not just the imaginings of a distant seer. They are the realities we face today, and they echo the warnings of Scripture that speak of a world groaning under the weight of sin and corruption. Nostradamus also hints at upheaval within the Church itself. His 1555 text, Le Prophecie, suggests that we could soon witness the farewell of Pope Francis. At 87 years of age, the Pope's health has been increasingly fragile, leading him to miss significant events like the UN Climate Conference due to lung inflammation and breathing issues. Nostradamus wrote, Through the death of a very old pontiff, a Roman of good age will be elected. Of him it will be said that he weakens his seat, but long will he sit in abiding activity. This prophecy raises unsettling questions about the future of the Church. While the arrival of a younger, more vigorous pope might seem promising, the warning that he will weaken his seat suggests that the church could face internal struggles or even scandals that could undermine its influence. As with many of Nostradamus's quatrains, this prophecy is cryptic and open to various interpretations. Does weaken imply a diminishment of the church's moral authority? Could it signal a period of crisis or division within the Vatican? Only time will tell. But the prospect of such turmoil within the heart of the Catholic Church is a cause for grave concern. Another of Nostradamus's quatrains speaks to the rise of cryptocurrencies and the potential collapse of traditional fiat currencies. He wrote of copies of gold and silver being inflated and then thrown into the lake, a clear metaphor for the devaluation and eventual dissolution of banknotes and other forms of physical currency. This prophecy has been interpreted as foreseeing the rise of cryptocurrencies, digital assets that mimic the status of precious metals as a store of value. In 2024, as inflation and global debt reach unsustainable levels, traditional currencies may indeed lose much of their worth, giving rise to new forms of digital currency that operate in the rapidly expanding world of the metaverse. Nostradamus warns of the collapse of fiat money suggesting that the spread of cryptocurrencies is not merely a passing trend, but a harbinger of deeper economic instability. As banknotes and coins continue to lose their value, the world may witness a dramatic shift in the way wealth is stored and transferred, a shift that could have profound implications for global finance and the very structure of the economy. In these ominous times, the prophecies of Nostradamus resonate with a chilling urgency. They serve as a stark reminder that the world is hurtling toward a series of crises, political, environmental, spiritual, and economic, that could very well signal the beginning of the end. As we navigate these perilous waters, we must remain vigilant, rooted in our faith, and ever mindful of the signs that point to the return of Christ and the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom over the forces of darkness. Let us not be deceived by the allure of cryptocurrencies, for they are as fleeting as the wind. Unlike gold, 
which has long been a symbol of stable value. These digital currencies are subject to volatile shifts, driven by speculation and the ever-changing whims of the market. Nostradamus, in his cryptic quatrains, hinted at the rise of something new and dangerous, far beyond the material realm. The moon at night, on top of the high mountain, the young sage, with the lonely brain, sees it. He is invited by his students to be immortal. Eyes to the south, hands on the torso, bodies on the fire. This enigmatic prophecy, veiled in metaphor, seems to foretell the emergence of artificial intelligence, a force that, like the cryptocurrencies of today, is untethered from the constants of the past, yet holds the potential to reshape the future in ways we can scarcely comprehend. As we grapple with the implications of such advancements, we must also turn our attention to another prophecy that has stirred much debate, a prophecy that may concern the very heart of the British monarchy. King Charles III, who ascended to the throne following the death of Queen Elizabeth II in 2022, has become the subject of intense speculation. It is rumored that King Charles has been diagnosed with prostate cancer, a mere 20 months after taking the throne. This alarming news has led many to revisit the prophecies of Nostradamus, searching for clues that might shed light on the king's fate. British author Mario Reading, an expert on Nostradamus, has unearthed a prophecy that seems to align with this diagnosis. Nostradamus wrote, Because they disapproved of his divorce, a man who later they considered unworthy, the people will force out the king of the isles. A man will replace him who never expected to be king. This chilling prediction has led to widespread speculation that King Charles's reign may be unexpectedly short, potentially cut short by illness or by forces beyond his control. The prophecy's reference to a king driven out by force and replaced by one who will have no mark of a king has fueled concerns that the monarchy could be on the brink of a significant and perhaps tumultuous transition. Nostradamus also accurately predicted the death of Queen Elizabeth II, foreseeing that she would pass around the age of 96, which indeed came to pass in 2022. Now, his prophecies concerning King Charles have led many to question the future of the British throne. Some interpret the prophecy as a sign that King Charles may be forced to abdicate due to his declining health, while others fear it could indicate a more dramatic removal from power. In light of these ominous predictions, speculation has turned to who might be next in line to ascend the throne. Prince William, the Prince of Wales, is the most obvious candidate, as the first in line for succession. Having prepared for this role for many years, Prince William has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to his royal duties and has increasingly taken on significant responsibilities within the monarchy. His growing interest in leadership and his desire to make a meaningful impact on the world suggests that he may be ready to step into the role of king sooner than anyone anticipated. Yet, the prophecy's reference to a ruler with no mark of a king has led some to consider more unconventional possibilities, most notably Prince Harry. Despite stepping back from his royal duties and relocating to the United States, Prince Harry's return to the UK during his father's health crisis has reignited speculation about his potential role in the monarchy's future. His departure from traditional royal norms, combined with his strained relationship with the royal family, casts a shadow of mystery over the prophecy. Could Prince Harry, with his unconventional path and controversial choices, be the unexpected heir that Nostradamus foresaw? This unsettling prophecy has given rise to a multitude of theories. Some believe it signals a dramatic shift in the line of succession, possibly triggered by unforeseen events or a crisis within the royal family. Others argue that Nostradamus's writings are too vague and open to interpretation to be taken as clear predictions. The reference to the King of the Isles could, after all, apply to any monarch, not necessarily King Charles III. This ambiguity has led to various interpretations, with historians and theologians debating the true meaning of the prophecy and its implications for the future. As we ponder these mysteries, we are reminded of the fragile nature of power and the unpredictable forces that shape the course of history. The prophecies of Nostradamus, whether taken as divine revelation or mere speculation, compel us to consider the deeper currents at work in our world. What does the future hold for the British monarchy?
And how do these ancient predictions align with the unfolding events of our time? In this time of uncertainty, we must remain vigilant, ever mindful of the signs that point to the deeper realities at play in our world. According to some theologians, Nostradamus's cryptic prophecy might suggest not merely a change in monarchs, but a profound shift in the very political fabric of the United Kingdom. The phrase, someone with no mark of a king, could be hinting at the end of the monarchy as we know it, pointing toward a move away from royal rule and perhaps even the establishment of a more democratic government. This radical interpretation reflects ongoing debates about the relevance of the British monarchy in the modern era and raises questions about whether the ancient institution can survive the pressures of contemporary society. In his renowned work, Le Prophète, Nostradamus seems to have foreseen the potential downfall of a monarch possibly even suggesting an abdication or forced removal from power. This prophecy eerily aligns with the current situation involving King Charles III and Prince Harry. Nostradamus predicted that the King of the Isles would be driven out by force, replaced by one who would have no mark of a king. His prediction of Queen Elizabeth II's death at the age of 96 was chillingly accurate. And now, in the wake of her passing and the subsequent rumors of King Charles's declining health, Many are wondering if the prophecy's mention of an unexpected successor could refer to Prince Harry. However, the idea of Prince Harry, who has distanced himself from royal duties, ascending to the throne, raises more questions than answers. The royal family has been plagued by scandal in recent years, but none have been as shocking as Prince Harry's dramatic exit from his official duties and the subsequent fallout. Despite stepping back from the monarchy, some still speculate whether Harry could, against all odds, find himself on the throne. A position secured by birthright, yet seemingly out of reach given his current estrangement from the royal fold. In the line of succession, Prince Harry stands fifth in line for the throne. If King Charles were to pass away, the throne would pass to his eldest son, Prince William. Should something befall William, the crown would then go to his firstborn, Prince George, followed by Princess Charlotte, and then Prince Louis. Only in the unlikely event of William abdicating while George is still a minor could the role of regent, someone who governs in the absence, minority, or disability of a sovereign, fall to Prince Harry, allowing him to rule until George comes of age. The notion that Nostradamus predicted Harry would become king seems far-fetched, but as history has often shown, the unexpected can and does happen. The world must be prepared for any number of possibilities including the potential birth of a new royal baby and a possible reconciliation within the royal family. Astrologer Gaul Eden Sasson has made his own predictions for the royal family in 2024, a year that promises to bring significant astrological events, including retrogrades and life-altering eclipses, affecting everyone, including the Windsors. According to Sasson, Harry's astrological chart suggests a focus on financial success, talent, and self-worth in the coming year. Additionally, his ventures in the realm of community and sales are poised to flourish, with potential success on the horizon. Sasson also speculates that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle might welcome a third child in 2024, when Jupiter moves into Harry's astrological house. Jupiter being the planet associated with unpredictable and powerful energy. Sasson further predicts a possible reunion or reconciliation between the estranged royal brothers, Prince Harry and Prince William. William, a Sagittarius Capricorn, was born under a powerful astrological sign, a new moon close to a solar eclipse, indicating a strong potential for leadership. However, his path to full maturity and the throne may take time, suggesting that any reunion or resolution between the brothers will not happen overnight. But is such a reunion truly possible? Following the announcement of King Charles's cancer diagnosis, Prince Harry, despite his withdrawal from senior royal duties, flew back to England to visit his father. It is rumored that Harry is willing to return for temporary missions to support the ailing king. However, this potential return to the royal fold is fraught with tension, particularly with Prince William, who is reportedly furious over his younger brother's repeated criticisms of the monarchy. Close sources to William indicate that he would likely oppose any attempts by Harry to reintegrate into the royal family. Should King Charles's health deteriorate further, William is expected to assume more of his father's duties, 
solidifying his own role as the future king and possibly blocking Harry's return altogether. As the royal family navigates these turbulent waters, we are reminded of the fragility of power and the unpredictable nature of prophecy. Nostradamus's writings, though often vague and open to interpretation, continue to provoke reflection on the forces shaping our world. What lies ahead for the British monarchy? Could the ancient institution be on the brink of profound transformation? Or will it endure these trials as it has so many times before? As we watch these events unfold, we must remain vigilant, discerning the signs of the times and preparing for whatever the future may bring. The Prince of Wales harbors deep concerns about the trustworthiness of his brother Harry and Meghan Markle. A source close to the royal family reveals that William remains steadfast in his belief that allowing Harry to return to royal duties would be unwise. Whatever was discussed between William and King Charles remains private, but it is evident that William is resolute in his decision to keep his younger brother at arm's length. Once doubtful, William is now more convinced than ever that Harry's return would bring more harm than good. As King Charles's health remains a priority, William is prepared to take on additional responsibilities to ensure the stability and future of the monarchy. With his focus squarely on his father's well-being, his own family, and the preservation of the crown. The possibility of Harry returning to the royal fold, even in a limited capacity, seems increasingly remote. Harry's controversial memoir, Spare, further widened the rift within the family with accusations against his brother, William, of physical aggression and harsh criticisms directed at Queen Camilla and the Princess of Wales. Additionally, allegations of racism within the royal family, as discussed in Omid Scobie's book, widely considered a mouthpiece for Harry and Meghan, have only deepened the divide. These claims have sparked widespread controversy and continue to cast a shadow over the House of Windsor. King Charles, ever the pragmatist, believes that mending fences with Harry and Meghan could benefit the monarchy by presenting a united front to the public. However, he also recognizes that granting Harry any official role would be a step backward. When the Sussexes left the royal family in 2020, seeking financial independence, the late Queen Elizabeth II made it clear that they could not have it both ways, performing royal duties while also pursuing commercial interests. The agreement allowed them to start a new life outside the royal sphere, but prohibited them from using their royal status for personal gain. So, is a reunion between Harry and the royal family possible? The answer is uncertain, shrouded in doubt. No natural disasters seem to pose an immediate threat to this possibility. But another ominous prophecy by Nostradamus looms large, predicting severe climate upheaval in 2024. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has warned that there is a one-third chance that 2024 will be even hotter than the record-breaking temperatures of 2023, with a 99% likelihood that it will rank among the five hottest years ever recorded. This forecast is driven by the human-induced burning of fossil fuels and the re-emergence of the El Nino climate pattern in the latter half of 2023 exacerbating extreme weather events like snowstorms in North America, volcanic eruptions in Iceland, and severe cold waves in India. Nostradamus's prophecy speaks of an earth growing increasingly parched, followed by devastating floods, events that mirror the catastrophic weather patterns we are witnessing today. The prophet also foretold of world hunger, fueled by a pestilential wave and a cruel tsunami that would further devastate the land. Such a tsunami could destroy farmlands, leading to widespread famine. Additionally, Nostradamus predicted a powerful earthquake that would claim thousands of lives, an event reminiscent of the recent disaster in Morocco, where thousands perished in Marrakesh and surrounding areas, and the ongoing natural upheavals in Iceland. Could these events prove Nostradamus right once again? Let us turn to scripture to understand these prophecies more deeply. Nostradamus predicted that 2024 would be marked by a severe famine a grim forecast that aligns with biblical teachings. Throughout history, famine has been both a punishment and a catalyst for repentance. Israel, in ancient times, occupied the rocky highlands of Canaan, a region where farming was a struggle even in the best years. Rain was scarce, 
and droughts could bring devastation. In the 13th century BC, nearly all eastern Mediterranean civilizations collapsed due to prolonged drought. In Deuteronomy, God promised rain to those who obeyed His laws, but warned that disobedience would lead to a curse. The skies above your head shall be copper, and the earth under you iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land dust, and sand shall drop on you from the sky until you are wiped out. For the Israelites, and for many in the ancient Near East, there was no concept of nature or chance as we understand them today. Blessings and calamities were seen as direct results of divine favor or wrath. National catastrophes such as famine were often viewed as punishments for collective sin, either of the people or their leaders. Yet, in every trial, there was also the possibility of redemption. Suffering opened the door to repentance and change. When King Solomon dedicated the temple in Jerusalem, he prayed that God would be merciful in times of famine, recognizing that such times could lead the people back to faithfulness. In the book of Samuel, we read of a three-year famine during the reign of King David, Israel's greatest king. When David sought the cause, he was told it was due to the sins of Saul, his predecessor. For the faithful, famine was both an end, resulting from sin, and a potential beginning offering a turning point toward a more obedient and faithful future. But what of the pestilential wave that Nostradamus predicted? Many believe it refers to deadly earthquakes, a notion supported by the words of Christ himself. In Mark 13, 7, Jesus warned, When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. These words remind us that such disasters are not just random occurrences, but signs of the times. Indicators that we may indeed be living in the last days, or perhaps the last days of the last days. Revelation also speaks of apocalyptic earthquakes during the tribulation far greater than anything the world has ever seen. Some turn to Jesus' Olivet Discourse, where he describes earthquakes and famines as merely the beginning of birth pangs. Reminders that, like labor pains signaling the imminent birth of a child, these earthly disasters point to the approaching return of Christ and the end of history as we know it. As we reflect on these ancient prophecies and the current state of our world, we are compelled to consider the possibility that the events unfolding before our eyes may be more than just a series of unfortunate coincidences. They could be the very signs that herald the coming of the end. In these perilous times, we must remain vigilant, grounded in faith, and ever watchful for the signs that will guide us through the tribulations to come.